Management Centre. Well, with the 2019 election uh, just about done and dusted, still some counting, but the, uh, the Morrison government uh, clearly will be a majority government. And the Reserve Bank of Australia has come out yesterday and said uh, that the Morrison government has to, quote, join in the heavy lifting uh, by introducing structural reform and spending more on infrastructure. Uh, during this speech, the Reserve Bank governor uh, very strongly indicated, he does tend to talk in code a little, but strongly indicated uh, that there would be a reduction in interest rates in June. And it comes as... Uh, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority announced uh, its intention to dump the 7% mandatory interest rate buffer, basically making it easier for you to get a home loan. Uh, to sift through these announcements and what it could mean for you, I'm joined now by independent financial analyst Martin North. Martin North, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Hello there. Uh, look, usually we uh, talk in terms of winners and losers when it comes to this sort of stuff. And when we talk about interest rate cuts, uh, we usually think it favours homeowners uh, and hurts self-funded retirees. Is the picture as simple as that? Uh, it's a little bit more complicated. We're talking about the cash rate, firstly, of course. That's the benchmark rate. But yeah, it doesn't but we necessarily... have no idea if the banks will pass it on or not. Yeah. It, it, exactly. So it doesn't necessarily get translated directly on. Um, but generally, if interest rates go lower, and of course we, they're very low already, so there isn't a lot of wriggle room on the downside, you know, towards zero. Um, but generally it means that savers will see the returns on their deposits continuing to go down. And they've dropped dramatically over the last couple of years. So many savers now are in the situation where they're actually raiding their capital just to keep um, you know, the, the household budget going. And if rates drop further, then that's going to be an even more of a difficult uh, thing for them. On the mortgage side, yeah, there could be some tweaks to mortgage rates, but it's not necessarily the fact that because the cash rate drops, mortgage rates drop. Um, and well, what we saw we've banks seen... independently lift their rates just a little while ago. Yes, they've done it consistently over the last couple of years. And what they're tending to do is to keep their um, cheap rate powder dry to offer it only to new borrowers rather than to existing borrowers, right? And so you could be on a mortgage that you've had for some time and be paying quite a lot more than the very best deals that are available you know, and, and there will be probably better deals if rates get cut. But they also will have specific underwriting requirements. So not everybody can get those really cheap rates. Now, it will be very interesting to see whether the public pressure and, you know, the media and everything builds up to the point where the banks actually do pass it on to what's called the back book, in other words, the old mortgages, or whether it is really just focusing on those, on, on those new. So it is always much more complicated than people might first think. And uh, by the way... Um, rates being cut is a sign of a very weak economy. And that's now finally being recognised by the Reserve Bank yeah, some until people very saying, recently. Yeah, the Reserve Bank's been quite slow to act because inflation's <laughs> been low for such a long time. People talk about their stagnant wages. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, it's no surprise to me. I've been following this for a long, long time, and I've been saying for two, three years that the forward indicators were way weaker than the Reserve Bank were willing to admit to the... GDP number was very weak at the last couple of times around and will be weak again. And the only thing that's really supporting the economy actually is uh, the high price of iron ore for our exports and the infrastructure investments that the government, both federally and, and, and statewide, are actually making because the household sector is really, really, really weak and the business sector is not really investing. Now, the weak household sector then takes you to why it is that now there's a focus on trying to encourage people back into the housing market, right, which is where this links then to the, the change in the APRA rules. And he, here's the thing. We've got a massive amount of debt in this country. Households are massively overexposed to debt. And yet, to try and keep this um, bubble alive a little longer and keep the economy going, what effectively is happening is that people are now being encouraged to borrow again, which doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense to me. It is interesting, isn't it? So this easing of um, of uh, we saw, of course, lending uh, lending restrictions were tightened after the Banking Royal Commission, and there was that notorious example of you having to itemise every bit of your spending, including whether you got Uber Eats on a Tuesday or whatever, in order to get a loan. Um, those restrictions will still be in place, but it will be easier to borrow because you won't have to have as large a buffer. Is that the idea? Uh, so the buffer is essentially, the way it works is that even if interest rates 
can't come down lower and lower. The banks have to work out how much you can afford on a minimum interest rate, right? Which is essentially around seven seven point two. So I say, if you can't afford moment. a seven percent interest rate, we're not going to lend to you. If it, yeah, exactly, you they're not allowed to. So okay. basically, the reg, the regulator put that in place, and then they said, and by the way, um, there's also a two point two five percent buffer between the actual mortgage rate and the rate, and whichever is the higher. That's what we can lend to. Now, what they've done is APRA said, well, actually, of course, different types of loans now have different pricing. So if you're an investor, you're paying a lot more for your loan relative to if you're a first-time buyer. So perhaps it doesn't make sense to have a standard set of um, you know, targets of 7, 7.25%. That, that they've now said is it's got to be 2.5% above the current mortgage rate that you're getting. Okay, now, that yeah. will potentially mean that some people... For example, if you're a first-time buyer and you're going in and you're going to get one of those really cheap um, you know, introductory loans, mm. you may well be able to get a little bit more money. Um, typically, for every half a percent, a reduction in that, in, that, in that buffer rate, as it were, you can increase your borrowing power by about 6%. So, okay. you know, it, it's not insubstantial. However... Well, oh, sorry, Martin, I'll have to... Well, there's so much to discuss here and it is so complicated, but I will have to cut you off there. But I'm sure we'd love to talk to you again as we can't... Whether the, if the cash rate goes down, we'd certainly like to talk to you. But thanks so much for your time this morning. Good to talk to you. Thank Cheers. you. That's Martin North, the Independent Financial Analyst, who's uh, based here in, in Wollongong. Nick Ryan.